In the 17th century, heretics and nonconformists risked horrific torture and a painful death. John Locke, a religious man himself, argued for much greater toleration of religious diversity. To start with, he pointed out that those who forced others to recant their beliefs by threatening them with red-hot pokers and thumbscrews could hardly be said to be acting out of Christian charity. Also, if these persecutors really wanted to save souls, they ought to focus on sinners, not on people quibbling over the interpretation of scriptures. But he had a better argument than these. Using force to change beliefs is irrational. That's because no threat can persuade anyone to believe something that they think is false. They might say they believe in your God to save themselves from torture or being burnt at the stake, but you won't change their actual beliefs that way. We can't just choose what we believe as a matter of convenience. So if the point of your threats is to achieve a genuine religious conversion, it just won't work. That was the basis of his case for religious toleration. But Locke wasn't as tolerant as you might expect. He didn't tolerate Catholics or atheists. Catholics weren't to be trusted because they were enthralled to the Pope, a foreign power. And atheists couldn't be trusted because they had no holy book in which to swear an oath and no fear of divine retribution. Mm -hmm.